Hello guys, what's going on? It's me again, Andre Neanderthal. I don't really have an intro this time, but today we are going to be going over the Azerlane Equipment Guide for Carriers. Now before we get to that, some of you guys wanted to see, so here are my PR ships. In Season 1, if this loads... In Season 1, I've got Monarch over here at max dev level and max fate simulation. Same thing with my St. Louis right here, and if you don't believe me, there is one. There's two. And we've got my Ibuki who is not at max fate simulation. Now moving on to PR2, we've got Kitakaze only at level 24, and Gascon at an even smaller level at level 16. Currently I'm working on Seattle right now, and it seems like there is a long, long way to go. <laughs> oh boy. Well, enough of that PR grind talk, and one more thing before that. I saw that a couple of you guys wanted to add me on Lexington, so if you are on the Lexington server, I will happily accept any friend requests that come to me. My name again is FBI Open Up, and my greeting has changed to this, so that just in case if you are wondering whether or not you got the right profile, this will confirm it. Now let's go and move on to some carrier equipment guides, yay! Now the first slot for a carrier will be your fighter plane. These are mainly used to shoot down enemy planes and drop a couple bombs too. Now there's a three-way tie for the best golden fighter, well just the best overall, which is between the A7M Repu right here, the F6F Hellcat, and finally the Seafang right here. Now the only farmable one from a stage that you can get out of these three is the F F6F Hellcat, which can be dropped from US boxes as well as 5-2. Let me go over to 5-2 real quick. Oop. Chapter 3, Chapter 4, Chapter 5, 5-2. Right here. It's also really good because you can get both the gold blueprint and you can get the purple blueprint. Both of them are very good. But if you do have the gold version, then obviously use that over the purple one. Now, there is also an exception to this category, if you are wondering, namely called the A6MF0, who actually has a fast launch time, has, has got the fastest launch time, well, either between the A6MF0 and the Mieter Schmidt. They have very fast launch times, but they have significant bad areas too. Like for instance, the A6MF has lower HP, lower damage, and lower anti-air. So that would mean that overall this is basically worse, so you'd be wondering, where would I ever use this? Well, this can be used for a ship like Unicorn that procs whenever their skill launches an airstrike. Now this would be useful because you could get that skill off much more, well not really much more, but a couple seconds faster. So you could get the skill off a little bit faster, but overall I would definitely stick to those three top airplanes instead of going for an A6MF0. Now if you want to be budget friendly and do not have any of these golden planes yet, you can always rely on your trusty purple F4U Corsair, which is actually very very good and it's the best purple plane out of all of them, but it's not as good as these gold ones obviously, and you can find the F6 the F4U Corsair from US boxes once again. So US boxes have very good airplanes. And you can get them from everybody's favorite stage, 3-4. Also known as the Fox Mines because of these two right here. One and two. Anyway, you can get the awesome F4U Corsair here as well as this very useful auxiliary equipment called Repair Tools. Now, moving on to the second slot for an airplane carrier. Okay, speaking of Fox Mines, let's go and use our Akagi, for example. We have the Dive Bombers. Now, the purpose of a Dive Bomber is to drop those big boy bombs onto your enemies for some big boy damage. This is also why Enterprise can clear screens in seconds when she says, Oh, what da So, the best in slot is undisputedly the purple SB2C Helldiver. Yes, it's purple, and yes, it's better than the gold planes in this category. Why, you may ask? Well, it's the only plane that can be enhanced to level 10 that carries the super big boy bomb, 
the 1 times 2,000 pound bomb. It also has an extra 2 times 500 bombs, which are very, very useful for completely obliterating your opponents. So, this is also found in US boxes. So, this is your third good airplane that you can find in US boxes. You can also get the uh, Helldiver from all the way back here. Same thing in chapter 3, but at 3 2 instead. Now this is undisputedly the best dive bomber and I would definitely recommend farming here until you get at least one hell diver for your carriers. This will help you and this will stay with you for the rest of your game. Now an easy way to remember what good planes are, since you might forget about them. If a plane has hell in its name, it's usually hella good. So the hellcat being the best fighter and the hell diver being the best dive bomber. Now moving on to the third slot, let's go and pick Kaga. So we've got the Torpedo Bombers. The Torpedo Bomber shoots out torpedoes in a horizontal line, unless you are using the Sakura pattern ones, which shoot converging torpedoes instead. So as you can see, this one says Torpedo Sakura instead of Torpedo Common, meaning that these ones have a homing kind of function that shoot their torpedoes and the torpedoes kind of lock on to their enemies. Now there's a hidden damage multiplier that not many people would actually care about, but the damage for these torpedoes against light armor is 80%, the damage against medium armor is 110%, and the damage against heavy armor is 120%. This means that these torpedoes will hit hard for these bigger ships such as medium and heavy armor, but will not hit as hard for a light armored vehicle. Now the best in this class would definitely go to the Fairy Barracuda because it's got high reload, it flies fast, it's got tons of damage, and it's great for PvP too because it has the highest kamikaze damage. That's basically meaning that when the planes hit the enemy's backline, they'll blow up and they'll inflict massive amounts of damage to their backline. So to remind yourself once again, because I love giving out reminders, let's go and just like super rare ships, this plane is yellow too, so if you get a yellow plane, it's really good. Now the purple one is also very good since you can only get this one from the gold and purple variants of the box from the Royal Navy boxes. You can farm the purple one from stage 7-2 all the way over here. Stage 7-2, which is actually really good. I farmed it to save for some reason, so it must be good for some reason. I kind of forget why off the top of my head. Oh, this is why. You can get the Golden Roomba too, which is an amazing anti-air gun. And you can also get the Fairy Barracuda. Two very good, very, very solid pieces of equipment right there. Now a notable mention, just in case if you haven't caught it, is the Golden Event Plane that you can get from this current event. Also known as the TBM Avenger VT-18 Squadron. This is actually the best slot for most situations now, replacing the Golden Barracuda. It's got a higher DPS for tor it's got the highest torpedo damage in the game, as you can see right here. It's got a bigger damage, so like 50 more damage for each thingy, whatever the thing is. Well, anyway, it's got higher DPS. It's got a longer cooldown, but most people will not really care about cooldown too long, too much, unless you are really, really keen about the firing adjustment stuff. So make sure that you buy that Avenger from right here if you click shop, munitions, and the event shop right here, the TBM Avenger. I already bought it so it says sold out, but if you haven't bought it yet for 2000 event points, definitely consider buying it. It is the best for the category. Now as I talked about earlier, there is something called converging slash tracking torpedoes. It is up to personal preference for most people, but it has got lower damage per torpedo, but they do have that locking and homing feature that moves towards the enemies automatically. These ones could just go in a straight line, the torpedoes. So this is very the ones that converge and stuff are very good against slow moving or stationary bosses since most of your torpedoes will actually hit them. And in comparison to this one, which would just go in a straight line and some of them would miss sometimes. Usually I would just stick with a classic Fairy Barracuda for this. It's usually fine, and you can find these 
well, you can find this one, the converging one, the Aichi B7A Ryusei, into the gold and purple JP boxes and stage 5 4. Now, as I show in 5 4, real quickly, I'm going to start mentioning the Ox Gears. 5 4. Oh, this one's actually good too because you can get the Bow Fours. So there's the Tenson, and then there's the Quadruple Bow Fours. Very cool. Now moving on to the aux gears for a airplane, it is actually pretty simple compared to most of the other classes. You just kind of want to slap two of these very nice golden steam catapults on because it is best in the slot. Now it's all around the best because it increases your aviation by a very solid plus 100, which is not something to be scoffed at. This is a huge damage buff and you get extra HP too, so very cool. Now this is basically the best in every scenario if you have it, and you can only get this from any kind of gold box. So if you open a gold box, just pray that you get lucky and drop yourself a steam catapult. Now next up if you don't have any of those golden steam catapults is the purple aviation oil tank at max 10. This is literally just an upgrade of the purple steam catapult because you get an extra skill, it's the same exact stats up here, but you also get this extra skill that increases the HP of enemy, oh no, of your aircrafts. So if you do not have a golden steam catapult, then definitely I would recommend getting yourself an aviation oil tank. You can get these from any purple or gold box once again, and stage 5-3. Now there are a couple of other things that are worth mentioning too in the aux uh, category of your carriers, and that is the PvP equipment. The homing beacon right here you can buy for 500 core data, that it decreases the airstrike loading time by a very nice amount, and also you get extra aviation. This is basically on par, and you can actually substitute a golden steam catapult for one of these PvP equipments. The homing beacon, as I said earlier, and this one right here, the 100-150 aviation fuel. They are very good in PvP, and they can also be used in PvE if you choose so. Now, I'm just saying you could also slap on a repair toolkit if you want extra tankiness, but you know, you probably shouldn't do that because you're missing out on a ton of damage. Now, there's a couple special exceptions that do not follow the traditional loadout. People such as the light carriers, such as Ryuho, which a which have a name called CVL instead of CV, have a different kind of loadout for a carrier. They have two planes right here, but instead of the third plane, they have an anti-air gun. Now Ryuho is also an special exception because you might want to consider putting an extra HP aux gear, such as the repair toolkit as I have said earlier, because it drastically increases their HP and her skill relies on her maximum HP to restore their heals, or well, the heals for her. So her heals are based off of her max HP, so if you give her more HP, then you're going to have a bigger heal. Other people that fall into the same category are Ryuho, as I said. And then there is Unicorn right here, who is also a CVL, same thing. And then there is also Shoho who is also a CVL. They all have that same interesting two plane and one AA, one AA gun. You would just normally follow the guide that I just said earlier for those planes and just slap on any AA gun and you will be fine. Now the other exception on this would be Illustrious over here because she actually has two fighter slots, the fighter and then fighter, meaning that one, one takes place of the dive bomber slot and she has very good anti-air capabilities, but has less bomb damage due to not having a dive bomber. She is very useful on chapter 13 if you do not if you need more anti-air, and her ability is actually very useful for keeping the vanguards alive because it basically lets them not die for a little while. So, and that just about wraps up the carrier's equipment guide. Like and subscribe if you found this informational helpful. And feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions that need to be answered. I'll try my best to reply as always. And the next very short equipment guide will be the two repair ships in the game. Stay tuned and I'll see you lovely people around. Later!